It's the Jacksonville Buzz. Amy West. Grant Smith. Adrian Houghton. From Studio 2 at Buzz TV, this is the Jacksonville Buzz. Welcome to the Jacksonville Buzz. I'm excited today because we had Mary Lyons from Jacksonville Beach Golf Course teaching us all things youth golf. And I spoke to Ron Episcopo, who is the chair of exhibitions for the Jacksonville Arts Guild, but also carrying on with that sport theme, I also spoke with Paul Mocker, director of rowing of First Coast Rowing. And make sure you don't miss Grant's interview with Jack Sindel Hawkins, pro tennis player. Stick around, we'll be right back. Massage Envy revolutionizes your massage. Introducing Simi Boost, six highly concentrated serums with active ingredients that deliver skin enhancing benefits for your entire body. Combine them with our new specially formulated massage lotions to offer skin enhancing benefits to your massage experience. Discover your Simi Boost today, an innovative boost to your total body care routine, only at Massage Envy. The Jacksonville Arts Guild is dedicated to elevating artistic awareness and promoting the arts. And joining us today is marketing guru, artist, and a frequently seen man about town, Mr. Ron Episcopo. Welcome. Hello. Hello. I appreciate that introduction. <laughs> I don't know if I can live up to it, but... <laughs> well, you're also the chair of exhibitions for the Jacksonville Arts Guild, correct. if I'm correct. correct. So tell us a little bit about the Jacksonville Arts Guild. Okay. The Jacksonville Artist Guild is a group of about 100 local artists, and our mission is to promote, encourage the art, and then sponsor exhibits for the artists. Hmm. And how many exhibits do you do you have a, a year? We usually have four. Um, last year we had one of the biggest events, which was the uh, Comer exhibit, where they took eight local artists and exhibited their works at the Comer, and they'll be there until December. Oh wow! And how was that, how was how did that come about? Um, <laughs> primarily from me stalking the director <laughs> <laughs> until she relented and said, yes, we'll do it. And um, it, was pr it was a very impressive exhibit. There were 86 artists who competed for those eight spots. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, it really encouraged local artists. And that night, the opening night reception was the largest in the comer's history. So, yeah. <laughs> Goodness me. I, I, I assume that the, you're going to have another one there then. We're going to try. Um, we're looking at some other venues that would be at the same level as the comer to have a major exhibit. In the meantime, we, we conduct these smaller ones um, and meetings once a month. And, and whereabouts do you hold this? Is it anywhere or, or do you specifically have venues that people can that's where the J Jacksonville Arts Guild exhibit? Okay, so we have uh, local locations uh, for the exhibit. One we have right now is at South Street Kitchen. Oh. Um, we have monthly meetings, which are at St. Mark's Church in Ortega, uh, which are focused on some development in the arts. Now you've got quite a large uh, event coming up soon. Tell, yes. tell us about that event. This is very exciting event. So uh, we're going to have an event at St. Mark's uh, Episcopal Church, which is at 4, 4129 Oxford Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, is that Ortega? Yes, it is. Um, so the event will start at 5 o'clock. There'll be a light buffet. Um, and then we're going to have two really important local um, people who promote the arts. The first is Abbas Aboud, who's an international concert pianist. Oh, who wow. lives here in Jacksonville and oh. kind of, yeah, I know people don't know who he is and it's, it's shocking. He's won international competitions in Paris, in London. Um, oh, fantastic. And he immigrated, uh, I believe, 10 years ago to the United States to bring his um, niece here 
for treatment at Wolfson's, and as he said, he will do anything for Wolfson's. Oh. He loves the doctors, the nurses, the people at, at Wolfson's, so he's had a couple concerts. So he's going to kick off the evening with a 20-minute classical concert. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. He is a, a truly a gifted gem in Jacksonville. And then we're going to follow it up with Jessica Santiago from Art Republic. Okay. Um, she is a real mover and shaker in the art community in Jacksonville. Uh, last year she had the big techism exhibit, which is the new form of art which is emerging all over the world. Um, and she's responsible for the murals downtown. If you see all those beautiful uh, mu murals, yes. she's the driving force between for getting those installed in Jacksonville, which has become now a destination for a lot of artists to come and look at the murals. And it's, it's concerning to me that when you say, do you know the murals? And people go, what are you talking about? Uh, that how can you not? <laughs> how can you not? So how, how do people get involved? If they want to come and see, how do they actually contact the Jacksonville Arts Guild? You contact me. Woo! <laughs> um, give me a, text me a message at 954-857-4831. Um, I'm not going to try to give you my email address, but it's episcopal.r at gmail. My last name is a little tricky, E-P-I-S-C-O-P-O-R at uh, gmail.com. Tell me that you'd like to attend. We'll set aside a uh, space for you at the event or if you're interested in joining. And I encourage all the artists in Jacksonville, people interested in the arts, to join the Jacksonville Artists Guild. Well, that certainly sounds like an exciting time and a very good event. So hold on to this thought and we'll be right back after these messages. I'm Grant Smith and welcome to my Foodie Minute. Today, we're going to discuss four eating habits to avoid. Avoid sugary drinks. It's sodas and sweet tea we're talking about here. It's just excess sugar, excess calories, so find an alternative drink like LaCroix or just drink water. Next, eating on the run. This just leads to eating at fast food restaurants. So pack a lunch before you leave the house and make it healthy. Next, skipping breakfast. It slows your metabolism, you just overeat later in the day. So have a healthy grab and go option in the morning before you leave the house, like yogurt or granola. And finally, eating your feelings. This becomes an endless habit. So find a stress relieving activity and make it exercise like yoga or tennis. I'm Grant Smith and thank you for watching my Foodie Minute. Welcome to the Jacksville Buzz. My guest today is an LPGA Class A teaching professional. She's taught youth on the first coast for over 20 years, and she's Director of Education at the Jacksonville Beach Golf Course. Please welcome Mary Lyon. How are you, Mary? Hi. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Jacksonville Beach Golf Course, they're going through quite the renovation right now. About to wrap it up, right? Major renovation. Uh, we'll be opening November 10th, reopening with a grand opening. Uh, the course has been totally renovated, all new greens, uh, some whole design changes. It's going to be very, very exciting. Wow, that is exciting, uh, especially in your profession, teaching golf. Absolutely. So um, you started as a youth, I'm assuming? I started playing as a, as a teenager with my father. He taught me how oh. to play golf uh, when I was about 13, 14 years old. Wow. So teaching golf, wh where did you get the, you know, where'd you get the passion for that? Uh, my father and my high school golf coach were both uh, experienced golfers and I just fell in love with the game. It's such a challenge physically and mentally that I fell in love with it and, and I really, really enjoy teaching children and adults, but especially children, but yeah. the passion that they can, they can grab that passion and take it on for the rest of their life. As long as you've worked with youth, there's got to be a difference working with a child versus an adult. How do, how do children learn? Children um, learn completely differently than adults and you have to teach accordingly. The children learn, we teach children to learn their ABCs through rhyme and music and yeah. we also teach golf that way. Um, instead of giving them a detailed list of, of things to do, keep your left arm straight, keep your head still, turn your hips, rotate your shoulders, we do swing like a pro, end on your toe like and it. teach them to swing and, and make it rhythmic and and they learn much, much better that way. Also, children learn very well on the golf course as opposed to uh, an adult regiment which may be 
standing on the driving range hitting two or three buckets of balls, which an adult would do, right. um, but a child bored after the fifth shot. So we go to the golf course and we hit shots and we go around and we hit chip shots and we putt a little. Uh, generally a very short attention span, but if you can grab their attention, <laughs> they can get a passion for the game. I know it's all wonderful. about that. I've got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, so I know about the short attention span. <laughs> Absolutely. The little ones have very short, but you can do that. You can uh, teach them with that attention span, little snippets of the different swings, and, and they, can, they have a great time. So fun, the fun part of the game is what we really try to instill them. So they right. want to come back. Yeah. They're not going to be passionate about playing college golf or professional golf till they're older. Right. But if we can engage them at a young age and get them to really enjoy the game, enjoy going on the golf course without uh, too much judgment as to whether they hit a shot good or bad, just having fun with it, then, uh, then we've got them for a lifetime. How important is a good coach? A coach that, that you can trust and a coach that you know is, is not going to teach bad habits. I mean, how, how, how important is that? It's everything. It's everything. I learned from my father, um, who was a little more uh, rigid than uh, probably than <laughs> I am uh, about it. He didn't understand the difference between adult and children. And I was a teenager at the time. But getting a coach that you can really trust that will take care of your children, mm -hmm. as you would a doctor, and that can engage them. And then when a child um, has a problem, very often uh, with, uh, I don't want to practice. I really like swimming better than I like golf, or I like play tennis more, right. and letting them explore the different options. So having a coach that understands that rather than pressuring them into playing your sport is really, really important for the child's the development as opposed to the game of golf. They'll come back to golf. They'll be able to play that for the rest of their life. Makes all the difference, I'm sure. What is the cost involved in getting a child started in the game of golf? It can, golf can be a very expensive sport, but most golf courses these days are very, uh, very involved with growing the game of the sport, the game of golf. Right. So uh, they usually have junior programs, summer camps, um, and, and it, it doesn't have to be all that expensive. More than one lesson a week is too much for a child at a recreational level, as an introductory level. Interesting. And once they get to be teenagers and they're playing high school golf then and playing tournaments, then it's important to get structured golf on a regular basis. Right. But at a very young age, introduce them, tease them, entice them. Have a great time yeah. uh, with it. That's the most important thing. It doesn't have to be that expensive. Equipment can get very expensive. Yeah, you, yeah I was going to ask you about I brought a bag, you... uh, a golf bag. Yeah. U.S. Kids Golf has probably the best quality clubs for children. They're weighted and balanced for a child, and they have uh, different levels for the age of your child, the size of your child. Made You're, specifically for children, not cut down the, adult clubs. Cut here. down adult clubs may be the worst invention of all time right. by most parents and grandparents. These were my old clubs. They'll be good yeah. enough for you. They are not. Is that because of the weight? The, the weight and balance is all wrong. The yeah, shaft, okay. the head weight, the grip size, all wrong. Um, we have clubs. Uh, this is my granddaughter Lily's club. Um, well, how she old is, is she? She is four. Um, she and <laughs> my other granddaughter it. Macy use this little, little itty-bitty club, and they play, and it's appropriate for them. That's a regular golf club. It is not plastic. It is a regular golf club, <laughs> and, and it's perfect for them. Wow. So equipment, getting the right equipment is very important. And like your child, anyone who has children knows, they, the, if you put shoes on them in six months, they've grown out of those yeah. shoes. And so golf clubs, kids grow out of their golf clubs very quickly. You can feel the weight and balance and how it's distributed in that as well. It's their Absolutely the, versus the... the same proportion as an adult club. Yeah. And they can play with these. Mary, how can people at home get a hold of you or find out more about you know, the, all the information here you've shared with us today? Our junior programs at Jacks Beach Golf Course, you can go to the website at Jacksonville Beach Golf, or you can reach me at LPGA, L-Y-O-N-S, at Comcast.net. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We'll be right back on the Jacksonville Buzz. Greetings. Today on Fashion Focus, I am talking menswear, the five staples needed to transition from summer to fall winter. Number one, the light gauge cardigan. No longer for your grandpas only. This is ideal for throwing on over a t-shirt, but choose a lightweight, breathable merino wool or perhaps a cotton blend. That way you won't overheat. Number two, dark chinos. The move from those summer shorts into heavyweight jeans can be tough, so prioritize slim-fitting styles in lightweight fabrics of green, burgundy, and of course, navy. Number three, the long-sleeved polo shirt makes it possible to look smart without ever fully suiting up. Number four, 
luxury sweatpants aren't just for the track anymore, as they have been transformed by the use of premium fabrics, modern cuts and unique detailing. And finally, chukka boots, essential that every man should own. A sturdy pair in brown for rainy days in the city or an after work date, but to be more casual, opt for the desert boots. I'm Adrienne Houghton and thank you for watching Fashion Focus. With five national titles, over a hundred state championships and gold medal wins at the Junior Worlds, First Coast Rowing is a force to be reckoned with. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Director of Rowing, Mr. Paul Mocker. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit about the history of First Coast Rowing. Well, it started actually about 30 years ago um, as the Stanton High School program. I'm sure and people then, will remember that. Yeah, yes. and so then as rowing became more popular, more kids wanted to be involved than just that went to Stanton. So they opened it up to a club, and it grew and grew. And just last year, we decided to uh, change the name and be officially a, a club that was open to anyone in the area. And so we came up with First Coast Rowing Club as the name. Now, for rowing, I mean, children of what ages do you, do you coach? Well, the seventh to ninth graders are generally our beginners, and we have them on a development team. So they train three days a week, and it's just basically learning how to row and learning how to, to get fit for rowing races and having a good time and trying to get them excited about the sport and want to continue on and row on the competitive team, right. which is made up of all the high school age kids. And do they get to see those high school kids? Too? Oh yes, they interact a lot. A lot of the high school kids will mentor the younger ones, and sometimes we'll mix the boats together and let the young kids go out with the older ones. and and so they get to, uh, to see what it's like. Now there's different types of rowing, isn't there? Yes, there's two disciplines. There's sculling, which each rower has two oars, and there's sweep rowing, where each rower has one long oar. Now do you start the younger ones off with, with sculling? Yes, sculling. It's, uh, it's more symmetrical, it's better for the young body's development, and, um, and it's a skill where if you can scull, then you can easily sweep row. And so we always start all the kids with sculling. Now, when, when I say sculling, I mean, I, I think of these, these long strokes of people on the river and, and it's a beautiful morning and, and completely flat water. We're surrounded by water here, but how easy is it for you to get on the water on a regular basis? Well, our boathouse is on the Arlington River right off the Cessary Bridge, and so that water is very protected. I don't think last year we got blown off the water once. Really? So if it is rough on the St. John's, we can just go up the Arlington toward Beach Boulevard and it's nice and protected in there. So we have a good spot. So we generally out on the water all the time. Unless there's lightning, um, that's the only time we're not out there. And, and, the, and the younger children, are they actually in singles or do they do doubles or? Yeah, we put them in singles, doubles and four person boats to oh, learn. Wow. And we even have an eight, a sculling eight, which is rare which is a great for, uh, tool for learning. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Now you've developed more programs than just youth programs. You also have adults, is that right? Yes, we do learn to row classes for adults. Um, we just finished one up uh, last weekend. We're starting another one the second and third weekend of November. It's basically a Saturday, Sunday, two weekends in a row where adults who've never done it before get to come out and learn how to scull. Now, do you have to be super fit for that or I mean do you do the exercise program as well or is it just the rowing? Uh, to start out it's just learning how to row. The okay. boats are hard to balance, it's a <laughs> completely different discipline, you're on water, it's totally different than any other sport so it takes a while to figure out the actual motion and how to row the boat properly and turn it around and, and such and then once people enjoy it and want to use it as exercise then we start introducing the exercise part of it in the training. Now, if, if parents are interested in, in getting their, their, their children involved and they get involved as well, is there a possibility of the two coming at the same time or are they at two different times of the day? Um, well, the high school team trains at their own time, but we do have some kids' parents that row out of the club and they'll go out on a Sunday, Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon. If, if people want to get involved or even just come along and, and, and watch the race, how, how do they find out more about it? Can you tell them how to get in contact with you? Yeah, our website is uh, firstcoastrowing.org and you can go on there and we have a list of all of our events, our classes that we offer and how to sign up your kid or if you're an adult and interested in our Learn to Row classes, you can do that as well.
Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's a delight to find out something different about sport other than football, softball, or you know, the, <laughs> the swimming. So this is, this is exciting. And I, I really hope that, that people in the Jacksonville area can uh, pay attention to other sports out there. You know, the tennis, the golf, and the rowing. There's, there's more for children to experience. So um, thank you to uh, Director of Rowing for First Coast Rowing, Mr. Paul Mocker, and we'll be right back. This is your Amy West Travel Minute. Airports can be intimidating to new travelers, so here are five airport survival tricks everyone should know. First up, download your airline app. This can save you a lot of trouble and keep you up to date on delays and cancellations. You can also download your boarding pass and keep track of your checked bags. Next, if you want to save a little money, bring your own water bottle and refill at the filtered water refillable stations positioned throughout many airports. These can be found near restrooms above the water fountains. For lactating mothers, look for the lactation pods many airports position throughout the terminal. This is a private, hygienic space that you can take care of your needs, and it sure beats the restroom. Mobile devices are generally being drained while we're traveling and on the go, so take advantage of your flight time by plugging in your device in the outlets provided on the airplane. These are usually found underneath the seat in front of you, in your armrest, or maybe in the monitor in the seat in front of you. And finally, in order to avoid confusion with your mobile devices, choose a laptop case or sticker to identify your device and keep it separate from the ones around you. My husband had an instance where his laptop got picked up by somebody else who had the exact same and it ended up across the country. So to avoid confusion, make sure it stands out and it's distinctive. This has been your Amy West Travel Minute. To find out more about this topic, visit amywesttravel.com. Welcome back to the Jacksville Buzz. My guest today is a professional tennis player who turned pro in January of 2018. He plays both singles and doubles, and he's become the first Division I All-American men's tennis player for the University of North Florida. Please welcome Jack Findell Hawkins. What's up, Jack? Good to see you. I'm glad we finally got you in here. Absolutely. It's a crazy schedule. So your last destination was where? I was out in Canada. Uh, spent a week over in Niagara and then went to Toronto. So spent a couple of weeks over there, uh, which is a lot of fun. Got to see some new places, which was cool. Wow, I love it. So you're headed where next? Uh, going over to Texas. There's a big three kind of string of tournaments over in Texas. Okay. Uh, going through Houston, Harlingen, and then up to Waco. So it'll be a busy time, but I was glad to be able to drop in and, and do this. Thanks for coming in. You don't become a Division I All-American without accomplishing a lot at the collegiate level. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your uh, UNF, your University of North Florida experience. And I loved it. Um, kind of came in and as, a, as a freshman obviously and just started out kind of not really knowing too much about the kind of college experience and stuff and right. as years went on just kind of got to grips with it and put a lot of time into just trying to be the best tennis player that I could be throughout yeah. and end up finishing my senior year kind of as, as best as I could have imagined and, and led me on into wanting to play professionally. I love it. So you were there four years? All four years, yeah. Um, definitely had some ups and downs, but uh, no, had you know an amazing time and, and fully loved kind of coming out there. Yeah, ups and downs are part of any any sport. How did how did did UNF find you, or did you find them? Yes, I mean I went through loads of kind of collegiate recruiters. Um, they all kind of come across to big tournaments over in the UK, right. um, and so I got to meet a lot of coaches, kind of deal with a lot of schools, and every school from over there just seems seems unreal. So I was just kind of having a pick of so many good schools um, but the coach was the main kind of thing for me um, who actually when I came out left three days before I actually started so I actually had a different coach for my four years um, but kind of once I got out there with the school I just you know fell in love with it and enjoyed all my time. Well, welcome to Division One College yeah, Athletics exactly, right it yeah. happens all the time yeah, all, yeah, no matter changing. what the, the no, sport so as you wrapped up your University of North Florida career you participated in the World University Olympic Games in Taipei, Taiwan. Tell mm -hmm. us about that experience. Unbelievable. Um, it's something you can only do if you stayed in education. Yeah. Uh, so you had to be in further education university. Um, and we got to go out, represent kind of Great Britain. Um, got to do, you know, see an opening ceremony, did your lap of honor with your country in front of like 40, 50,000 people. That's too cool. Uh, 
it was incredible. The most amazing kind of two, two and a half weeks that I've done, really. How and many people get to represent their country? Exactly, you know? yeah. It was just a, such a unique experience to go over and just loved it. It was amazing. Tell us a little bit about Taipei. Really kind of blew me away, really. Kind of huge combination of, you know, the city is very kind of new and modern and up to date. They used to have like the tallest building in the world, which you used to go up and see. Really? And then kind of we went on this elephant trail walk and it <laughs> takes you back, you know, it's just been there for thousands of years and it's just, it's, you know, it's just such a hybrid of a country. That's awesome. Uh, but no, amazing experience, loved it. You know, that's the one thing I think why people connect with your profession so much is because everyone's jealous you guys get to travel so much now you're working <laughs> but I mean true. you get to see the world and get to ha get to have a different angle on it for sure the, the tra and that's something that puts a lot can put a lot of people off tennis when they get to that age where yeah. it's just constantly moving around but for me it's always yeah. something I've kind of looked forward to and continue to enjoy it what's the transition been like to go from college to a, being a professional I think the the toughest thing was the routine. College became very kind of, you knew what you were going to do. It was all planned out for you. And okay. you just kind of f went along with it. And then the professional thing is just, is totally down to you. So on days that you just maybe are tired and stuff, but you just got to still go out and, and make the effort. Yeah. And that's, I think the biggest thing is just learning to, you got to manage yourself more than anyone. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on. Before you leave, I want to hit you with some rapid fire questions. You okay. down? Yeah, go for it. All right, let's, let's do it. <laughs> all right, here we go. American football or soccer? Oh, f soccer every day. I thought so. Best city you've ever been to? I'm, I'm going to stick with London. London's I like still, it. Still He's a homeboy. Yeah. Uh, nickname someone gave you? Findles. I like it. <laughs> Blondes or brunettes? Well, that's a tough one. That's too, <laughs> that's too tough for me to come I could throw there. redheads in <laughs> there too. Celebrity crush? Uh, Jennifer Aniston, always. <laughs> one meal, what would it be? Uh, Sunday roast, dinner at home. Okay. Dinner or movie or Netflix and chill? Netflix and chill, always. Early bird or night owl? Uh, depends. Depends on the day. I'm going to go night owl on that one. Okay. Last Halloween costume? <laughs> no, I can't. Maybe like a skeleton when I was like 12. Like, <laughs> I like it. Long time ago. Uh, if you weren't a tennis player, what would you be? Golfer. I love for it. Sure. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Take it easy. Thanks for joining us on the Jacksville Buzz. We'll be right back. Pros to join us at Oktoberfest Jacksonville, October 12th and 13th at Anheuser-Busch Brewery. The best band, the Wunderbar Band, will be there. We have two days, 20 bands, all sorts of fun entertainment for the entire family. OktoberfestJacksonville.com. Pros. Rise, Sufa. Ziggy Saki, Ziggy Saki. Hi, hi, hi. Ziggy Saki, Ziggy Saki. Hi, hi, hi. Pros. I had a great time on the show today. It was nice having Jack Fendel Hawkins in before he heads to his next tournament in Texas. Mm -hmm. And it was good to find out more about that event for the Jacksonville Artists Guild and also to speak to Paul Mocker, the director of rowing for First Coast Rowing. And I'm so informed on how to get my kids involved in sports now. It's been a great show. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.